Today we are leaving the capital city of Yerevan and heading out to see some of the beautiful country of Armenia. We will first stop at Areni 1 cave which is the oldest known winery in the world. Then a quick stop to Norovank monastery to climb the steep foreboding steps to the ancient church. Then we will make our last stop at Momik winery in the famous Areni wine region for a beautiful private tasting at a family owned vineyard. First things first, I don't like to discuss politics, but we need to get a little background information. Armenia and their neighboring countries have what some would call a troubled past and present in some cases too. Particularly, Azerbaijan and Armenia have a drastic dislike for one another because of recent and past conflicts. The years 1918 to 1921, 1988 to 1994, and many clashes between 2008 and 2016, where they agreed again on a ceasefire. In 2020, another major clash began and thousands were killed, including many civilians. These clashes have continued up until 2022, even after many other countries like Russia have gotten involved to try to de-escalate the tensions. We always hope for peace and that one day both countries can put an end to their conflicts. If you'd like to learn more about these conflicts, please search some reliable sources for information. this um, wall here next to the road because we're driving past the um, Azerbaijani and Armenian border and they have a lot of conflicts so that's to protect the road and make sure that nobody shoots anybody driving um, but yeah right on the other side of these mountains right here is Azerbaijan so we can wave to another country that we can't go to because of the border conflicts every time we drive this road our students so afraid Um, Areni Cave 1. This is where they have found the oldest in the entire world winery and shoe. And it's really interesting, about 7,000 years old this cave is and they're still finding more every day. This amazing cave is nestled in a small settlement near the popular wine region of Armenia. The area is home to many bats and swallows who build their nests in the cave. The archaeologists only began extensively exploring the cave in the last 15 years and in 2008 found the oldest shoe. In 2011, the oldest winery was uncovered and many other artifacts such as a straw skirt and a human brain dating back to about 4300 BC. It says the shoe measuring 24.5 centimeters long, European size 37, and 7.6 to 10 centimeters wide was made from a single piece of leather worn and shaped to the wearer's right foot. It was stuffed with loose, unfastened grass, which was used to maintain the shape of the shoe or prepare it for storage. It's really interesting. It's amazing that we get to actually see an ongoing investigation of this area like really spectacular really oh it's so cold in here it's a tight squeeze there were also three individuals found in the cave dating back to around 6,250 BC, and one after studying their genome was found to have red hair and blue eyes. This place was exceptionally old. 
I was really amazed by it because the oldest archaeological site I was able to visit was Akrotiri, Greece and Santorini. This place predates Akrotiri by about three or four thousand years at least. The next stop we made was Norovank Monastery, which dates back to the 13th century. This entire complex holds many buildings, including three churches, a museum, and ruins of some civil buildings. We'll climb up the steps. So this is Norovank uh, Monastery, and we just climbed up the very steep steps to get up here, and then I promptly smacked my head on the door. So <laughs> always be aware of the short door frame. The church was a burial site for the Orbelian family and holds many of the more famous princes and princesses of this family. The unique architectural design of the main church is often a reason many visit this sacred place and climb its intimidating steps for a magnificent view of the mountains and gorge below. All of the beautiful carvings and symbolism make it a place that is a must-see when visiting this region of Armenia. Autumn, you want to turn the other way? Oh, there, 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 <laughs> there is no ghost, just bees. <laughs> Emily, you're next. There. Okay. It's cold. Oh, good. Turn around. Let <laughs> me just scream. I think we chicken rice cup. Turn around, Willow. Come in, my idiot. Hey, Willow. It's going to get it crowded. It's going to get very crowded there. <laughs> <laughs> Where are you going, Caleb? Into the no. <laughs> going in the hole. Oh, my butt don't fit though. We are at Momic Wines in the Areni wine region of Armenia. Mm -hmm. This is basically the Napa Valley um, of Armenia. It's really beautiful. Momic Wines is the place that we're at today for our tasting. And um, it's a little out of the way, but it has the most amazing views. It comes very highly rated on Instagram. So 
we decided to go ahead and check it out. It, yeah, the, it's beautiful views. <clears throat> it's like crazy to see the deserty hills and then boom, green valleys everywhere. Mm -hmm. Which is probably why grapes grow so well here. Yes, the, the rocky parts, they really like the rocks. Um, I know in Santorini and in Greece in our previous travels, we definitely um, saw the most sweet grapes in Santorini on that rocky, arid ground. It's pretty cool. Yeah. So, I guess let's go check it out and see what all these wines taste like. We cannot wait. This beautiful family-owned vineyard is nestled into the beautiful Areni wine region of Armenia. The wine produced in Areni is known to be the best in the entire Caucasus region. Areni is also famously known to be the home of the dark-skinned Areni Noir grape. This winery has been in the family for over 40 years and specializes in creating wines using the local varietals of grapes. Their wine is either aged in traditional clay vessels or in inside wooden barrels. The name Momik comes from the famous painter and architect and sculptor who created the Noravank Monastery that we just visited. We truly enjoyed having their amazing award-winning wine and getting to know more about their beautiful family and their history. It's been 50 years that family is producing a homemade wine. Starting oh, from 1960s, father and mother were doing yep, uh, wine, homemade wine. Uh, for time uh, during the Soviet Union time. After the collapse of USSR, uh, the lands were given to the villagers. How are you? So they got a thousand square meters of vineyard here. In this region. Uh, At first, they were uh, taking care with mother and father. He was taking care of the vineyard with mother and father. Mitch the Carnage. Working the all Carnage those years. Years. in 2000. Uh, they, uh, they already have two acres of uh, vineyard so, yes, in this uh, region. They it. And this is him, Kantarika Hink. Hink. Five years old. <laughs> His father. He was his mother in 1970. This is all uh, taken at the same day. Oh. Mm -hmm. These are the only uh, pictures that were saved. Oh. It's their little son. <laughs> Uh, it's with, his, with his two sons and mother. Uh, they have two sons. Oh. The oldest one is serving in the army. The youngest one is living with them. Yeah, this is his son. Serving in the army. In Armenia, it's uh, required, required to serve in the army. In, in 2015, uh, there was a wine festival in the village and they won the first prize by producing the best homemade wine. And from there, they became very famous. And year by year, uh, it turned out a famous place. People were visiting here. They also, uh, TV channels came here and uh, they gave interviews about the wine that they make. In 2015, this person uh, visited him and he suggested to make this uh, place, uh, which will be Aiguste Fishish, from vineyard uh, to the bottom. Mm. And he owns a wine uh, factory in Europe. Yep. They had a very good uh, homemade wine, but uh, were having troubles for selling them, and it wasn't famous. Uh, they wouldn't uh, find uh, sellers. And this person helped them to produce them. Mm and bottle them. Two years they were selling the wine in Yerevan and in 2019 they stopped the funding and there was no funding for producing wine since the amount of wine was uh, not, allowed, uh, not allowed and also they didn't have funding they closed all the contracts uh, they cancelled the contracts with the stores that they were selling their wine and the, they, they leased some money uh, but since they couldn't produce it and there were no, no new donors, uh, they just uh, gifted this place uh, to the owners. Yeah. And in 2019, uh, they had a new uh, project. Uh, and they turned their house into this place to produce wine and bottle it. <laughs> and since they are a small producer, they just sell the wine here in the vineyard when people visit. 
Mm. Then you will try three types of wine, uh, rose, white, and red. Oh. They are all dry wines. Oh. Mm. Help yourself. This one is their rosé. They keep it from oxygen and it actually turns it pink. I love rosés. They look so pretty. I love the color. We ended our day with a relaxing dinner at our Airbnb and completed the beautiful tradition of Maria's baptism. On the third day, after anointing the child with oils, they bathed her. The godparents returned and we had a wonderful time eating and having great conversations with our new friends. Thank you so much for joining us on another adventure in Armenia. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that like button for more of our travels.